Occasionally viewers offer to send me things. In this instance, a viewer offered to send me some vintage motor oil, oil that's about 60 to 70 years old. And what showed up in the mail was this steel box. So anyway, we're gonna open up this steel box and see if there's some vintage motor oil in it. And if there is, let's do some testing on it to see how it performs against modern motor oil. Now <laughs> check out this case. This thing has four screws and two bolts holding the cover on. Has two windows on this side. This thing's amazing. I'd say this is the best protected oil I've ever seen. I have to admit I'm a little bit nervous about opening this box. This seems like way too good of a box for a can of oil. I've probably made a couple of oil companies bad in some of the previous videos, so I'm not so sure I should be opening this box. The way this box is put together is very impressive. Check this out, it even has a coffee can that's been welded into position to protect the can. Wow, this is some really old oil. There's no viscosity grade rating on this oil can. There's no API donut on this oil can either. This is some old oil. Not a lot on the packaging other than it says Quaker State Motor Oil, one quart. Quaker State Motor Oil is world famous for its superior lubrication qualities. It is skillfully refined in Quaker State's own modern refineries from 100% pure Pennsylvania crude oil. Every drop is pure, rich lubricant, the product of more than 50 years of continuous research and specialization in the field of automotive lubrication. You can depend on Quaker State to give your motor the finest lubrication to protect it from wear and corrosion, to keep it clean and smooth running, and Quaker State is more economical too because it lasts longer. You go farther before you need to add a core. I've cleaned up all the loose flaky rust so we don't end up contaminating the oil with rust. I'm going to shake this up real well before I open it because I'm going to send off some oil samples to an oil testing lab to see what type of additives are included in this engine oil and to learn more about the oil properties. Wow, it definitely smells different than modern motor oil. I'm going to place this in the mail and we'll have the results near the end of this video. We'll compare the vintage motor oil against this Quaker State 10W40 conventional motor oil. I'm also going to send off this oil to an oil testing lab to see how it compares. They claim their product has advanced durability, the industry tough guy. Meets or exceeds requirements of API SN and previous API categories. Unlike the vintage oil, this oil contains the API donut and its API service SN. Now that we've taken a quick look at both of these oils, let's expose them to significant heat comparable to extreme duty engine use. We'll first measure out 200 grams of oil into each of the oil containers, then expose them to 410 degrees Fahrenheit of heat for two hours. I'll rotate the oil containers every 10 minutes just in case one burner is hotter than the other. Look at the difference between the two oils. The modern oil looks like honey and the vintage oil is green. I'll also monitor the temperature of both oils throughout the test to make sure that they're very close to the same. Both oils will experience an equal amount of time on each burner. So why this test? The NOAC volatility test exposes oil to even more heat than this test to simulate engine operating conditions around the upper piston ring area of an engine. High quality oils resist evaporation and thermal breakdown. At the end of this test, we'll see how much evaporation has occurred with each brand. Then we'll be using the cooked oil for two additional tests to see how they perform. Wow, look at all the vapor coming off of that vintage oil. That's a lot of vapor. It's been right out two hours. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the oil from the heat and let these oils cool off. And when we come back, we'll see how much evaporative loss occurred. The oil has cooled off, so we'll go ahead and weigh each one of these to see how much evaporative loss occurred. The modern Quaker State started off at 430 grams. It now weighs 423.37. That's a loss of 6.63 grams. The vintage Quaker State started off at 404.56 grams. It now weighs 395.13. Wow, that's a loss of 9.43 grams. That's a lot of evaporative loss. To measure cold oil performance and thermal breakdown, both the new and the cooked oils will be placed in a freezer that's set to 40 below zero Fahrenheit. We'll come back to this later in the video. I'm gonna tilt both of these oil containers over on the side and we'll look at the bottom of the container to see what the oil looks like. Wow, look at the difference. Looks like the vintage oil has some sludge at the bottom.
In the next test, we'll be comparing the lubricity or film strength of each product. We'll begin by adding 40 milliliters of oil of each product into the test cups. The test will last right at 10 minutes. After the test, we'll compare the size of the wear scars on each of the bearings to determine if modern or vintage oil offers the best protection against engine wear. While the lubricity tester doesn't simulate engine operating conditions perfectly, it'll provide us with some great information. Modern motor oil is on the left and the vintage is on the right. Actually, modern motor oil did win the showdown as far as a lubricity test, but the vintage didn't do too bad. I'm really looking forward to seeing the oil analysis report to see what type of additives, if any, are in this oil. In the past, we tested straight up crude oil and the crude oil that had a high sulfur content did very well. We're gonna test out vintage motor oil in this small engine. I'm gonna measure out 16 ounces of motor oil that we're gonna to add to the small engine to see how it performs. This is unused 1950s motor oil. Let's see how that small engine likes it. Okay, the oil level is full. We're going to allow this engine to cool off and when we come back we're going to do a compression test and look inside the combustion chamber to see how much buildup has taken place. There's a slight drop in compression. I don't really understand why so let's pop the cylinder head off and see if we can find any evidence. We saw quite a bit of vapors come out of the positive crankcase ventilation, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of crusties on this cylinder head, so this motor oil does not tolerate the heat very well. Also, there's quite a bit of buildup around the intake and the exhaust valve. When it comes to selecting a high quality motor oil, cold oil performance is a huge factor. The oil that we're about to test has been inside a freezer for nearly 24 hours. The freezer is set at minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's kick off the cold oil flow test and see if the 1950s oil can keep up with modern motor oil. 1950s oil in lane one cooked 1950s oil lane two cooked Quaker State lane three new Quaker State lane four. The race is underway but none of the oil seem to be aware that the race has started. With the reputation to protect as the industry tough guy, new Quaker State shakes off the cold first and is out of the gate. Cook Quaker State is in a close second. After resting inside of an oil can for nearly 70 years, the 1950s oil is still very sluggish. The modern oil is picking up speed as it's heading down the home stretch with modern cooked on its heels. And New Quaker State is the first to cross the finish line two inches ahead of Cook Quaker State. Finally, cooked 1950s oil is out of the gate with uncooked 1950s on its heel, but the race is all but over. Wow, the 1950s oil is not liking the cold temperature at all. What a race.
So the oil analysis reports are back and it's very interesting. The 10W40 conventional motor oil, it has 116 parts per million moly, 475 parts per million phosphorus, and 581 parts per million zinc. So that's a decent anti-wear package. This oil really relies heavily on calcium as its detergent dispersant additive. It does have a little bit of boron and magnesium, but much less compared to the amount of calcium. TBN is basically an oil's ability to resist becoming acidic. And the TBN for this oil is 6.2, which is pretty average. Now for the 1950s oil. This is very interesting. It doesn't have any moly, doesn't have any potassium, very little boron, only six parts per million calcium. So this vintage oil is missing the detergents and dispersants that modern motor oils have in them. Regarding anti-wear additives, it does have 475 parts per million phosphorus and 509 parts per million zinc. This is very interesting. The TBN is only 0.4. So the ability of this oil to resist becoming acidic is extremely low. So the question is, is this vintage oil still good? good? The answer is absolutely. This oil is still good. However, it's just not going to be good for long in a modern car. The reason for that, it lacks the detergents and dispersants to keep the engine clean. And because it lacks those, the TBN is very low of 0.4. So this oil would become acidic pretty quickly and acidic oil is definitely going to cause a corrosion problem and this oil would likely sludge up an engine fairly quickly. One thing for sure is they sure don't make motor oil like they used to and that's probably a good thing or our cars probably wouldn't last that long. I had a lot of fun testing this vintage oil. I just want to say thanks again to the person that sent it to me. It was really interesting to see the difference between the old and the new. The old just did not flow very well on that cold oil flow test. Also, it did not do very well on the evaporative loss test. Even in a small engine run, we could see a lot of vaporization coming out of the positive crankcase ventilation tube. 100% of the videos on this channel are video ideas that come from viewers. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. I read and reply to as many comments as possible. Just wanna say thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to next time.